How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to be seeing what your car says about you. The car scene is full of different types of cars and there's different types of people that drive those types of cars. So we're going to go through some cars and see what your car says about you. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I guess just stick around and you'll find out. And also what I'm saying doesn't apply to everyone too. Obviously you could take the weirdest car and turn it into something completely different. But we're just talking about stereotypes. Pretty much this is all just going to be car stereotypes. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, first one, you got to start with the V6 Mustang. If you got a V6 Mustang, your search history is probably full of how to make my V6 sound like a V8. That and your goals for the car are probably just to make it look as aggressive as possible with spending the least amount of money possible. At the end of the day, you know it's a V6 and you're just dreaming of that V8. Pro tip. Don't waste your money on it. Just go buy the V8 if you want it so bad. Go trade that motherfucker in. Oh, and if you have a V6 and it's manual, you always tell people, at least it's manual. I used to do the same thing, don't worry. All right, if you have an Audi R8, there are two possibilities. Either A, you want it to just blend in a little bit more and not get the Huracan, or B, you can't afford the Huracan. If you got a first gen Audi R8, you 100% cannot afford the Huracan and you just wanted the cheapest supercar possible to fit in with the rest of the cool people. Although deep down, you probably realize that it doesn't snap as many necks as you wish because it's not a Huracan. And half the time they mistake you for an Audi TT. When you think about it, it's just a Magnum sized TT. It's just a, a girthier TT. It's just a bit bigger. All right, this one's gonna rustle some feathers. So if you got a Dodge Hellcat, you sure know how to read a brochure. And you think that just because you have 700 ponies underneath the hood, you got the fastest car on the street. But there's gonna be one experience that's gonna humble you. One day you are gonna get your doors blown off by a $5,000 shitbox, barely making 500 wheel horsepower. And you are going to realize what the fuck just happened. That's when you'll transition into dumping endless amounts of money into your uh, Hell Kitty to make sure that it never happens again. Having the most horsepower doesn't necessarily mean you'll be the fastest. And Hellcats learn that faster than most people. At the same time though, the Hellcat is one of the most iconic cars in pop culture right now, so a lot of people fuck with it. I like Hellcats. I just don't know what the hell I would do with one. All right, if you got an EK Civic, it's probably because your mom gave it to you when you first got your driver's license and you just haven't gotten rid of it ever since. Or you're a hardcore Honda fanboy and you miss the ways of the Hondas. You miss when Honda was at their prime, building cars that were actually fun and actually decent looking. Although there's two vastly different things about these two people that I listed. One of them, their car still looks like this. And the other one, their car looks like this or this. If you're out here repping that Honda was the best brand and your Honda still looks like that, I ain't buying it. I have a feeling you're just a little too lazy to put in the man hours to make your Honda the best Honda ever. All right, the mighty V6 Camaro. V6 Camaro's got their owners feeling a type of way. Some swear that the V6 is better for track performance and it's actually more balanced. Others simply bought it because they have a 400 credit score and they couldn't get anything else. In my opinion, the V6 Camaro has to be one of the worst sounding V6 muscle cars out there, which is why you never really see them. It's always either the four cylinder turbo or the SS. Unless we're talking fifth gen, in that case, it's probably an old rental car. God, and those had to have been the ugliest wheels ever made. Those literally look like work truck wheels. Can't tell me otherwise. Those are fucking Silverado work truck wheels. Just know if you have a V6 Camaro, to this day, I have never seen nor heard anyone say that they've seen a quick V6 Camaro. Go trade it in. It's time to move on. All right, I know you guys are wondering, what about V6 Mopar, Drew? I'm just going to bunch them all up. Obnoxious. Right on the same page as G37 owners. Shitty sounding exhaust. Probably worse than Camaros. I don't know which one. They're both tied for last. Hardcore Hellcat fanboys and the slowest muscle car on the face of the earth. Not only do you have the weight of the Hellcat, but you have the horsepower of an Altima. These people's mods usually consist of just some crazy lighting effects, maybe some weird decals and wheels. They never really lower them. They may or may not wrap them, but they definitely are not touching that engine bay. Lights wheels action all right nissan Altima drivers you guys are an absolute menace on the freeways you guys somehow make this mighty 200 horsepower car seem like a fucking 500 horsepower car by the way you're able to stay on my ass while i'm just cruising even if i try to dip out a second later you're right back on my ass i don't know what nissan is feeding these motherfuckers but they are some crazy people also their credit score is usually below the 300 but that's fine their their 600 dollars ultimate payment is 
boosting that right back up in no time all right let's move on to some cooler cars we got the mark IV supra and i'm not going to put myself into this i mean i might fall into one of the categories but not just talking about myself if you have a mark IV supra there's usually two possibilities you got the na version and you're probably not touching the engine bay but you still like hearing that you have a supra or b it's pretty much balls to the wall race car rarely do you see a mark IV supra that's just mid it is either junk or it is balls to the wall race car. Also, usually when they're balls to the wall race car, they look the most stock on the exterior besides the balloon sick, besides the balloon slick sticking under the, besides the balloon slick. Fuck, I can't pronounce that. Besides the balloon slick, besides the bal fucking shit, besides the massive balloon slick on the rear of the car. And it's always the shitty ones, the NA ones, that try to look the coolest. Go get a turbo before you try to look cool. All right, the mighty BRZ. We'll talk about the older generation, I guess. If you have a BRZ, it is probably wrapped teal or has been at one point in its time. You have underglow, and there is no doubt in my mind that you do. And your mods consist of lowering it, wheels, an intake, and a, and a cat back. You like to tell people that it's not about having the most horsepower, but you secretly wish that you had a turbo one. All right, the mighty NA Miata. If you have an NA Miata, you 100% have a TikTok, and most of the TikToks have to do with the fucking flippy headlights. In conjunction with some weird anime audio. By the way, and this is probably just because tall people don't fit in the car, but if you have an NA Miata, you're probably 5'6 or less. The highlight of your day is making the headlights flip up and down and wink at people. And the low point of the day is when you try to accelerate in this rust bucket of a car. Acceleration doesn't really exist. It simply just goes. All right, if you have an N54 335i, then you think you have the fastest car at any car meet you pull up to. You are just waiting for people to start running their mouth so you can go take them on with your N54. Although you think your N54 is the German 2JZ, you will forever live in the shadow of the mighty 2JZ. By no means is it a bad motor, it's just a bad car it's attached to. It is a great sleeper for people that don't know how to tell the difference between this and a 328i, but on the same page, you look like you have a 328i. Very fun cars to drive though for the very short period that they actually run. Also, you and M3s, ultimate beef. You guys think you have beef with everyone else, but we see you guys hate M3s. Lastly, we have the Chevy C6 Corvette base model. If you rock in the base model, probably with the LS2, it's because your dad had it and now he's a little too old so you get to take it out on the weekends to the car meets. Or you are a dad and you're just slowly morphing into the stereotypical Corvette owner. New balances, jean shorts, tucked in shirt, good old Corvette hat on top. You believe you're living the cliche American dream of owning the all-time American sports car and you actually think it's able to compete with other supercars but sadly, one day you'll be mistaken. Also, you probably don't change the exhaust because you don't like it being too loud. It'll wake up your kids. Oh, and it's 100% an automatic. We already knew that though. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Obviously, these stereotypes don't apply to everyone. Um, you can have any of these cars and not fall within them, but if I hit the head right on the nail, let me know down below. Also, comment down below what other stereotypes there are, and maybe I'll make a video of stereotypes that you guys think other cars carry. So comment them down below on any cars in this video or cars that I missed. Anyways, if you want to see more videos like this one, hit subscribe, and until next video, peace.